Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Talks. Now, we're doing something a little bit different today because my guest is Pete Crouch, who usually stands behind Hello. that camera and that mixing desk that's in the background. Yes, it's a bit odd for me. I'm on the wrong side of the camera today, but thank you for having me. You're welcome. So, you said to me before, go gently. I did. I don't know what he thinks I'm going to do to I'm, this. I'm much more comfortable <laughs> that side of the camera, usually. Well, I guess we've got to start at the beginning of this wonderful relationship with Teg and okay. how did it start and what did you do? So, okay, well, I first met Keith probably, it'll be maybe six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Keith still had the agency. Keith was still doing uh, quite a bit of stuff in social media. And at that time, my business, um, we were a full service creative agency. One of the areas that we we weren't strong in was social media. So I hooked up with Keith, and we did we did a bit of work together then, and, and we've stayed in touch ever since. And it's been great to see how he's gone on and developed the organisation that he has. So you've watched each other evolve, very much, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And there's always been a, a sort of good working relationship. Um, and then we have a couple of mutual connections that have mm -hmm. kind of brought us brought us together. Um, and then as my business has changed over the, the last couple of years. Um, I thought I'd, I'd seen what was what was happening in Teg. I'd seen the progress that that um, that was made, and I was doing um, a sort of um, intermediate role for an organisation that Keith came in and delivered the Teg game to. Okay. I was part of the leadership team in that business, mm. and it was the first time I'd seen anything like that. And Keith facilitated the uh, the game, which got us all very much out of our comfort zones. Good. Really enjoyed it, <laughs> and it kind of sparked off the conversation again. Um, I was keen that that Keith came and and saw the facility we've got here, and that's when it started really. And then Keith said, "Right, we need to get Jenny up to to have a look because she's going to have a million ideas when she sees this place." <laughs> it's not like and Jenny. then between us, we um we sort of uh, came up with the idea that. It would be good for Teg to have its own podcast. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realise then that I would actually be, end up being on it, but hey, there, there we go. We take no prisons. Yeah. You all stay yeah. on. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, it's a relationship that's sort of developed over, over a number of years, really, and glad to see that, you know, we've, we've brought it together doing this. It's been a real bit of fun. Yeah, because today it, it's quite hard to describe, but for those of you who are watching, you'll get a better idea of what we're actually surrounded by. But for a listener... Um, I wouldn't even know where to start, apart from saying that this room that we're sat in is enormous and full of the most wonderful gadgets and gizmos. And where we're located and what you can offer is probably beyond the wildest dreams of most people living around these parts because it's not just what you can see and hear. You do all sorts of things. And what I've loved about spending time with you and being here is... Pete's like the book of knowledge. And up to press, I don't think there's anything you haven't done. Oh, there's plenty I haven't done. There's plenty I still want to do. Yeah, well, we'll get on to that <laughs> yeah. in a minute. But if you were to describe Liquid Studios, because yeah. you bought the business, didn't you? I did, back in 2013, yeah. Yeah, so what pushed you to do that? Um, well, I suppose how far do you want to go back? But uh, the sort of brief history of, of, of my sort of professional career. This is like. your life <laughs> without much. the theme tune. <laughs> um, so I spent probably about 15 years of my life in the corporate IT world, mm -hmm. uh, in sales and marketing and IT. Worked for some small companies, worked for some very big European companies. And over that amount of time, just got a little bit disillusioned by the whole industry. Um, I was working for a big European company. Um, my daughter was very young at the time. I was away from home probably at least three nights a week and I just had enough of it. Yeah. Um, so I thought, right, I need to do something else. You know, I, I kind of got a bit fed up with the whole corporate world. I came home one night and said to my wife, I'm going to leave. I'm going to do something else. And it actually took me probably the best part of two years to um, get the balls to make the decision. Mm. And I decided that I would just start a photography business thinking, how hard can it be? <laughs> I'll give that a go. I'd always been a keen amateur photographer. Um, 
and then I actually bought a franchise to, to start with. Um, so we did a lot of uh, event photography, corporate events, sporting events, all sorts of stuff, really. And that sort of got us into the, the, the business of So of did that franchise have an existing team? It was, yeah, there were, there were about, at the time when, when we bought, there were probably about 15 up and down the country. Um, and the area that we bought was all of Cumbria and all of Northumbria. So it's quite a big patch oh, yeah, that, that yeah. we covered. And because there was um, vacants, uh, a vacancy for a franchisee uh, up in Scotland, we also covered quite a bit of Scotland. Mm. Um, and it was very successful. You know, we, um, we did some amazing events and it, it, we learned a lot about um, the, the balance of, you know, taking good pictures is a really, really small part of having a successful photography business. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we employed a lot of students that were learning the skill of photography but weren't learning anything business-related. Yeah, yeah. So it was really good to bring them into the business and see how things work. And, and I think yeah. that's integral because we've talked about it on the show before about, well, in my opinion, and we've shared this opinion of the lack of um, creative subjects, vocational subjects in skills at the moment let alone the progression routes yeah. within that. So if we've got a year nine student who loves photography, nine times out of ten, I don't think that student would know where to go, who to go and talk yeah. to, yeah. to progress with that career. And we've we've done it here as well. We've had somebody in to see about work experience who was working with Teg. Yeah. Because you, like I've, I've kind of touched on, we've touched on, this is so much more than just a studio. Well, one of the things that I'm really keen to do here, and that, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time, we've invested a lot of money in, in sort of getting the facility the, the way that we've got it, is that from a creative perspective, um, there's there's lots of individuals out there that, that want to do something creative, mm -hmm. but there's a there's a there's a lack of um, the the sort of coaching and mentorship that comes along with taking whatever it is that you're good at, whether it's photography, whether you're a painter, whether you do what you know. The, what I have seen in in the last sort of however many nine episodes or so that we've done of these, the amazing people that have come in have got an idea, and the idea is not quite enough. It's that taking it to market and it's that business support mm. that is going to lead to their success or otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know, there's plenty of talented but poor artists yeah. you know and and that's something that i think isn't built in people you know you get natural entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that will have a go and they'll do things um and you know as we've seen many times you look at you know all sorts of successful people they weren't always a success no. you know they've they've usually behind them they've had a bunch of less successful businesses my first business was when i was 19 um I opened a health food shop um, in southwest Scotland. You know, no surprise, it was an epic <laughs> failure. Uh, I, I borrowed a grand off my mum and dad to open a shop and I kept that running for about a year. It was, it was, I, it was too early. Yeah, um, the boom so point hadn't happened. It hadn't happened at all. <laughs> so, you know, that's the point, isn't it? You've got you've to try things and you've got to dip your toe in as it were but but this idea of of mentorship and coaching which only comes from people that have experience people mm. that have actually done it um and that's a big part of what i want to do here you know and seeing some of the people that have come through the studio as guests on the podcast and thinking you know they they need a facility like this they can make use of this and and how can we sort of get that into a place where they can access that where otherwise they maybe wouldn't be able to afford it. And that's that's a, another part of the relationship that we're, we're working with with TEG is that the idea of um, creating a separate um, community interest company mm -hmm. that will then potentially have access to funding that could support some of the work that, particularly these young people, I've got a really, a really you know, strong belief that you if you've got young people that are going through the normal you know, academic process, mm. which is great, um, but then you've got people that want to try things. You know, if they're lucky enough to have parents that can support them or or at least coach them and guide them, that's amazing. But they're, they're going to need external support as well. It's not, of course, I don't, I don't yeah. think it's you know, just enough from your family. I mean, I've worked with, with, with my family and it, and it comes with its challenges. So yeah, external yeah. support is It's things massive. like, for example, when we first met, we talked about, because um, I'm product-based business, mm. product photography. Yeah. And the standards, certain e-commerce websites put on makers like myself to have amazing product photography. And at the end of the day, when you're a one-man band, as we all know, you're an accountant, 
you're um, you've got to wear all the hats. You're doing the marketing, yeah. you're doing the PR, you're doing the making of the product, you're sourcing the product, ordering this, and then you t- oh well, you need to take brilliant pictures. We cannot be absolutely outstanding at everything. Whereas we spoke and you were like, we could do this, you could do that, and I was like, but it's got to be affordable yeah. for makers because we haven't. This is our like bread and butter. Whereas, but this is kind of where we. Were, I think you were going with this idea of being it, it yeah. being accessible and affordable exactly. yeah. to younger creatives yeah. as well as us guys who've been at it and, a while. You know, any, anyone that's you know starting out in business, like you say, you've got to wear every hat because mm-hmm. there's no one else to do it. And I think it's only over time when you you start to understand that you know your ability to focus on the bits that you're good at is where your strengths are. Yeah. And then over time, when you've you maybe accumulated a bit more cash and you've got a bit more profitability in the business, you can outsource some of those things. And I'm a bit a firm believer, you know, I don't fix my own car, I take it to the garage. Mm. Um, and, and I think, but in the early days, that's difficult because you have got to wear every hat. So. And you're scared of spending money because you don't want to... Exactly. It's been hard-earned. Yeah. And... You, you're scared of giving it to somebody else because yep. you don't want it to go wrong. And of course. It's your baby and there's all that emotional attachment yeah. to, yeah, yeah. well, I've made these and I need you yeah. to do well. But it's not just, you get the photograph and then you're like, right, okay, I'll whack it on Etsy, I'll put it on Not on the High Street, but now what? How and else is, can I use it? Exactly. And, and, you know, in, in the world that we're in now where, you know, the, the consumer has... A, a, a tiny attention span. Mm. The standards are very high. You know the competition is very high. The way that the way that you present your business, whatever that is, whether it's you making goods, whether you're a service business, whatever you are, the way in which you present yourself is is the the thing that's going to make that customer decide whether or not to work with you. Mm. Um, and the bar's just getting higher all the time. And I think it is it is really challenging for for small businesses to really stand out. I think um, I suppose as well with the the massive um, impetus on video content now. Yeah. And again, you're like, right, well, I've made it, I photographed it. Oh, that's not good enough. I now need to do a, a video all about it. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about uploads and things the other day and that, it's not so bad on the social media platforms, but when you're trying to share content to um, businesses or whatever, it's all them technical things of how do you do that? Yeah, it is. It's difficult. And I think that's the point, isn't it? That, you know, yeah, we've got a great f- facility here, which is it's horses for horses. It's for the right people. But, you know, we also have uh, we've done quite a lot of training from here, particularly in um, food and drink. Mm. Um, because of where we are, you know, yep. Cumbria is full of amazing, you know, artisan food producers, hospitality industry is massive. Um, hence the reason we're sat in this kitchen that we are now. It's a very nice kitchen um, too. <laughs> so, but the, um, you don't necessarily need a facility like this. We've run training where, you know, on a decent, um, smartphone these days, you can, you can produce some really good results yeah. and are really keen to help people understand that, you know, get started, get, get underway with stuff. Um, and get things out there because you know you're not going to you're not going to produce the perfect work day one, but if it gets you started and it gets you underway, at some point in time you might need a facility like this. Mm. You you might want to come and you know we might do your whole product catalog or, or whatever that well, exactly. may be. Well, I never thought I'd be sat in here hosting a podcast, but here I am today. Exactly. I never thought I'd be on this side of the uh, the camera, <laughs> but there you go. But it like I say, it's it's learning the process, isn't it? And I think that's really important. Well, like you say, with any business. It's learning the process and getting hands-on experience because I don't know about you, it drives me insane watching a two-hour webinar and then being expected to know what to do afterwards. I'm like, I, think, I need to get my hands on it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, you know, people learn in different ways. Don't you? Yeah. I, I, I was not academic at school. I didn't do well at school. I went on to college and, and I studied business, but I've never been particularly academic. I, I learn by doing things. Mm, I'm the same. Um, I've never been a big reader, which is hence the, the podcast. When podcasts first came around, I started listening to podcasts probably, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Um, the ability to take information in while I'm driving the car or while I'm walking the dog or whatever is well, brilliant, make, brilliant for it me. It makes it so much more accessible. <clears throat> exactly. To yeah. everybody else in the world yeah. who, like you say, doesn't learn by reading or more visual or audio or whatever. And I suppose my previous life in teaching, they're one of the things you had to juggle in every single lesson. Yeah. And again, I think what you do here, if you brought half a class of young people in here, <clears throat> there, I bet there'd be no behaviour issues. If they were, if this is what they were interested in, there'd be no behavioural issues because they'd be so engrossed 
in wanting to learn what they're interested in. It's, it's interesting you say that because I know, you know, it's quite some time since I've been at school. <laughs> um, but the teaching methods then, I, I, you know, were very different. And I just wasn't, I didn't have the capacity to learn in the way that they was, was supposed Teaching to you, teach. Yeah. Hence, I didn't do very well. Um, you know, I left school with, you know, barely any qualifications. Um, so it's, it's a real part of me now. If I can spend time with someone and I can share a bit of knowledge or I can get engaged with them and I can show them how to do things, that's how I would have learnt mm -hmm. had that been available to me at the time. And I probably would have, you know, been it probably would have been a very different experience school for me because I, I just didn't enjoy school um, because the, the way in which classes were led I, I didn't respond well to at all. No. I think there's you know there's there's a big room there's there's room in the education sector at the moment to to change how we teach people. Oh, I totally you know, agree. We, we, there's, there's, it seems like there's such a fixed plan, um, and not all kids. You know, certainly with kids. I mean, I've spent a bit of time around people with autism. You know, p people that are have a different need from learning. It's yeah. just not really accommodated very well at the minute. I think it's a massive gap. We've got a huge skills gap problem in the UK at the moment. Oh, massive, we're not massive. We're not filling it any day soon, and we, we really do need to change the way in which we support learning and, and invest in, in young people. And I think entrepreneurship is, is one of the ways that will make a massive difference because... You know, in the UK, the SME sector is the biggest, you know, and, and historically it's been shown when we are in, you know, periods of recession and, and, and an economic downturn, it's the SME sector that will pull us out of it. Yeah, we're you flying know. the flag for keeping yeah. this country and, going. You know, getting young people involved in business at the earliest opportunity is, is a brilliant thing. And I, I can see that's what you guys are doing in Texas. So yeah, because like applaud was, it. we've said, um, um, you've met some of them on the show, the under 18s are the amazing the audience to push forward to in my opinion potentially save this country yeah and if we can give them as individuals as makers creatives entrepreneurs business women men half of that little push to take it forward then like we said before it, it doesn't make it a job because you're sharing that knowledge and expertise. You're passing it on, you're paying it forward. And then to watch that young person or adult, whatever, client, take it forward, make it into something profitable, because mm. let's face it, we all want to make a living, but or to, that it changes their perspective or their mood or their life in some way, makes it all worthwhile. Yeah. And... When I was teaching, I was very much about that, and it was all about the the easiest way to describe it was just get to know them. Yeah, don't be shy and be be a bit nosy because I am nosy. I mean, one of the things that <laughs> I've noticed, and it's been a you know when I'm usually sat over there behind the camera, I've had the privilege of, of sitting through all of these interviews with all of, <laughs> all of the people that you've had on the show. He's heard me talk a lot. Yeah, and, <laughs> and the you know, and it's not taking anything away from from uh, from all of the guests, but particularly the younger people, the people that have, you know, maybe they've been inspired by their parents or they've been, they've had some sort of nudge from some direction. You know, it's just, I love to see that type of thing happening where they're just having a bit of a go, mm. you know, okay, there's, because they're young, there's, there's maybe a little bit less risk, but it's still a risk, you know, you're, you're putting your time and effort and, mm. and money into something. Um, so the, some of the people that we've had on the show are particularly inspiring and it's great to see. And I've no doubt that, you know, the support that they've had from Teg is going to, you know, escalate them on to, to do greater things. So it's been it's been real privilege being over there watching it all. Yeah, you've watched it develop. You heard it at your first. You've seen it, all the, the, the tasters of people's yeah. businesses because we taught entrepreneurialism at Rathbone mm -hmm. and we were working with the hardest to reach young people. Yeah. You were working with young offenders, school refusers, but there was 10 in that class that sat down and wrote a business plan. Mm. And it was Peter Jones. Peter Jones, who's on Dragon's Den, has a course that's accredited. It's level two, so it's the equivalent to, well, what in old money was a C at GCSE. And anybody can access it. Yeah. So it was like, why, why aren't we teaching this? Mm. Because not everybody's going to go down the specific route we I need think to give if, people the option. If you look at, you know, the traditional route into academia is that, you know, people do well at school, they go on to university and then they continue their studies to become a, a teacher or a mm. lecturer. Those individuals have never run a business, you know, and I'm not taking anything away. I couldn't do the job of a teacher. I don't, not, not in, in the sort of traditional format anyway. So it's, it's easy to be, to be quite tough on it, but 
they've never done it, you know. And I yeah, think they haven't experienced it. What need, there's an opportunity, a massive opportunity, I think, in, in the education sector to bring business people in, not teachers, but business people, um, whether it's on a part-time function or whatever it is, that will talk to young people. And I'm, and I'm talking, you know, 11, 12-year-olds to yeah. get oh, their head primary, around. Yeah, primary, definitely a primary level. Get their heads around, you know, what, what it takes to sort of balance the books. You know, you've got an amount of money that's coming in and you've got all these bills to pay and how do you balance that? Um and I don't think mainstream teachers have the capacity to share that because they've never done it. No. You know, if, no. if we could encourage a, a better um, relationship and a better interaction between the world of business and, and education, the country would benefit. We'd have, we'd have you know, people taking a bit of a risk and, and you know, establishing great businesses. I think it's a, it's a real gap that we, we need to fill at the minute. So if the education secretary is listening... Yes, pay attention. ...give us a job because yeah. we'll sort it out. <laughs> I think we might end on that note instead of us um, probably starting to pick it in uh, a parliament. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you sat on that Thanks side. Thank you very much. It's been a, a great experience, the whole thing, um, because I've been pushed out of my comfort zone massively <laughs> and it's such a fabulous space. It's in a fabulous location at Crofton, Thursby. You've got so much more we could talk about, but I think the best way is to show people. So I think we need to add something to this. You might edit this bit out. Well, that's fine. No, we can... Uh... Have some kind of video too that goes with this podcast of actually like where we're sitting, what's available, because you've got co-working spaces, we've got a sound recording unit. We haven't even begun to sell the premises and what you can offer other people. And if you're out there thinking, I need some help in video photography, audio, film. The list goes on because Pete knows most people around these parts because he's got a friend that does everything. It's yeah, been great I, listening to yeah. you about it all. Yeah, I mean, that, and I'm in a fortunate position where, you know, over the years of doing this, I've built up a great network of, of other professionals yeah. that, that, you know, do things that I don't. And we, we've got a great network. So, you know, putting a team together, putting a crew together is something that, that we can do and it's, uh, it's mm. great to do it, yeah. So he's played it down quite a bit, but he has been very successful and worked with some major players. Um, and I think if you look for, well, I'm not going to tell them where that you can, they can um, find you. Yeah, you so can I, tell them. Thank you very much. I am reasonably frequent on LinkedIn and you can find us at Liquid Studios. And the website, which kind of explains what we've got here and, and what we can offer is uh, liquidstudios.co.uk. Excellent. So go and find him. Find out what he does more. And um, I'm sure we'll see and hear more from you in the future. Thank you very much. It's been a real privilege being part of the show. Excellent. Thank you. Well, there you go, folks. That is Teg Talks. It's been great. It's been an adventure. And it's definitely been a bit of a journey for me. So we'll see you soon. Bye. A Liquid Studios production. <laughs>